tired of the everyday grind? Want to get away from it all? Descent into Paradise. Florida. Greetings, everybody, from sunny Florida. Here's wishing you the best of everything. And it's my personal belief that the best of everything comes from right down here. Well, hey, everybody, this is Steph from JustTodayInParadise.com, and welcome to episode 18 of Just a Podcast in Paradise. Me and the Dip Crew love living in the Sunshine State, and it's our goal to help you plan for your very own day in paradise. Follow along as we explore the keys, theme parks, springs, and everything in between. As you know, we love to enjoy an adult beverage or two while we hang out with you guys, and today's cocktail is inspired by the mastermind behind some of your favorite Disney lounges, so be sure to check out our social media for the recipe if you want to drink along. We're ready if you are, so kick up your feet, throw on your shades, and let's take a trip to paradise. Hi, guys. Hey. Hi. We've got Megan and Garrett back in the Stu Stu Studio. Stu Stu Studio. So they us. know who we are. You know, they do. I, just, I think they know what this is. I at love this time. our intro song. It's pretty good, right? I just the yeah. vibe. It really gets I you in the mood. Play yeah. yeah. Do, do, do. No matter what's going on, Paradise kind of just who composed it? melts away. Well, I did. Oh. Very I mean, I don't want to brag. Actually, okay, I, I screwed and chopped it. But the backbeat that you hear is from gosh. Soul Fire Productions. And Soul Fire. Spell F A Y A H. And, and, and tell tell the audience how much you paid for that song. I got a really good deal. Yeah. So twenty seven dollars for twenty seven thousand dollars. Yeah. So as you can see, we need you to check out our Patreon to support the Dip Crew, so we can pay off that song. <laughs> you wouldn't have that awesome <laughs> song. Right. Otherwise. Exactly. Uh, so today we have a very exciting show. Uh, we've got Megan and Garrett with us, and in just a little bit, we're gonna have a special guest, a very special guest. Really? Yep. Wow. Surprise. I know. I'm pretty oh. excited. Uh, but first I thought I could paint a little picture and help teleport you to my favorite pavilion in Epcot. Mm. You guys know what it is. It's dark. Yeah. It's, it's always nighttime there. Yeah. It's and Mexico. there's a really Mexico. fun ride there. There is. So for you guys at home, I want you to close your eyes unless you're driving. I'm going to paint you a picture. So imagine it's a beautiful summer day. It's hot, but not humid. Maybe like 86 degrees nice breeze you enter the world showcase from the left which is of course the correct way to enter the world showcase and you come upon an enormous mesoamerican pyramid you walk up the steps get inside and lo and behold you are transported to a bustling mexican marketplace in the middle of the evening the air is cool there's beautiful twinkling lights overhead, colorful handmade art, the smell of chimichangas waft past your nose, and you see a beautiful river off in the distance. It's time to explore. Can you guys see it? Can you feel it? I Are you there with it. me? I oh my God, I got the chills. It. I'm emotional. Yeah. yeah. Did you write I almost that? wept. I did. You wrote that. I did write it. Only someone who's really experienced and appreciated it. This place, I mean. It is it is incredible. It's and, incredible. And I don't think I ever appreciated it till I was older. Uh just because, like, I just wanted to run. Epcot was, like, my least favorite day when I was a kid. I was like, yeah, oh, it's, lame. it's not I don't so go much to for kids. Yeah. Because there weren't that many rides, all that kind of stuff. But, like, but, when when I got older, now, you guys brought me there for the first time when I was over as 21. As an adult, yeah. And it was amazing. Oh, it's incredible. It's like you literally forget that you're at a theme park. You think you're in, well, Mexico. Yeah. I was going to say another world, but Mexico is of this world. And I will say that that ride is so, I don't know if it's underrated, but it's one of my favorites just because it's like a dark ride. Uh-huh. I like the vibe. I love, Don Duck's my favorite character from Disney. Oh, really? Yeah, That's do, cool. do an impression for us. You have a I Duck. cannot. Why don't you try? He's your favorite. I feel like you're going to spit all over the microphone if you try. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. I'm better than Mickey. Oh. Oh. Well, this took a turn. This is like a weird turn. But uh, what I love about this pavilion is really... It has everything. It has, oh wait, it has everything. It's also funny how Mexico being our neighbor, there's something familiar about the culture, but also it feels a little exotic. Mm. You know, like mm-hmm. it doesn't really feel like that close to us, but it, but it is. Yeah. Uh, what I love about this pavilion is the wide variety of shops to meander and things to do. You have the Grand Fiesta boat tour that Garrett mm. was talking about. You can even kind of see pseudo fireworks in there. They're not running fireworks right now at Epcot. Mm. So you could ride uh, the Grand Fiesta tour and get your fix. Uh, you have the San Angel Inn for some amazing food, and you can even sit in the San Angel Inn and watch some of the the boats go by yeah. as you eat, yeah. which is pretty cool. 
Also, just about the boat ride. It's starring the three caballeros. That's true. That's Mexican for cowboy. Well, I yeah. guess Spanish for They're cowboy. They're all birds? No, they it's are. Donald Duck. Yeah, it's Donald Duck and mm-hmm. who are the other? Yeah. There's Donald Duck. There's... The two birds. There's a, like a parrot They're, and like birds. a cardinal. One's Jose? Probably. Or am I thinking of the bird from the Enchanted Tiki Room? I'm Googling it. All right, let's find out. We got it. We got to know this stuff. This is Who critical. Are Dip the critical. three caballeros? Hey, do you know the song? No. The three caballeros, three gay caballeros. They fly just like birds of a three feather. Three gay, They're gay caballeros? Yeah. Huh. They're happy. Uh-huh. Wow. <laughs> Before it's time. Right. It was very, <laughs> very trailblazing, very progressive. So it's Donald Duck mm-hmm. paired with his old friend. Poncho. Ho- Jose Carioca. I, it was Jose. The cigar smoking pair from Saludos Amigos. So maybe not. Who represents time. Brazil. Yeah. Brazil. Brazil. And then later, they're friends with a pistol pack and rooster named Panchito Pistoles. Pancho. I said Pancho. That was close. He Pancho. That was Mexico. pretty close. That was okay. a really good accent. Yeah. Good job. Panchito. I love Thank that. You. It's almost like I took four nice years job. of Spanish in high school. I took 11 years and I don't know a thing. How do you say like Mazel Tov in Spanish? I don't know. I think it's just Mazel Tov. <laughs> I wanted to be like, congratulations. Cumpleaños? Yeah. I think that's like, you know, I don't know. I don't know. That's <laughs> birthday. Yeah. Con, con, We're going to cut this all out. One. There is, I think <laughs> there's like a congratulations in Spanish. It sounds like congratulations. Yeah. I, that's confusing. One that place happens. I do, I did like that was, that I didn't know was there was where they like make glass sculptures. Yes. I so love that. Cool. They blow glass all day long. I've actually like almost lost my sight staring into the glass blowers for so long. No. Yeah. I was no? wrong. It's felicidades. Like, yeah. You know. Felicid- felicidades. Felicidades, yeah. Megan, for your Pranchito accent. Uh, <laughs> uh, the real draw for me in the Mexico Pavilion and mm. where we've spent all of us several hours together the whole time. is La Cava del Tequila. And it's always nighttime in there, so you don't have to worry about when you start drinking. You know when they say it's five o'clock somewhere? It wasn't Jimmy Buffett that said that. It was actually Panchito. And he was in the Mexico Pavilion. I remember. Uh-huh. I remember. I heard him say it. <laughs> it's Cinco o'clock somewhere. And we're at the... We're at the Cup of Tequila. <laughs> so let's talk. Yeah. We're going to talk more about what we can get at the La Cava del Tequila. Yeah, tell us. Oh, tell us what's, why so, it's so special. My favorite beverage that has stood the test of time. Mm-hmm. It has been oh something my gosh. I've thought about for many years. And I'll never forget it. It's my destination cocktail at Epcot. Mm-hmm. We all know what it is. It's the Ep- it's the Epcot margarita. <laughs> it's the avocado margarita. It is the it's avocado the margarita. margarita. It's kind of turned into it our is the Epcot, Epcot yeah. margarita. It's so good. It it is good. Yeah. What? It, so how would you describe it? Because that sounds the first time you hear it, that sounds disgusting. It's kind of got a creamy texture. Yeah. Yep. It's not savory, and the flavor is really more like melon because they use a melon liqueur in yep, it. Yep. Yep. And so it gets the green from the avocado, the creaminess from the avocado, but the melon flavor, it's sweet, oh, not so too good. sweet. The texture is it's, so it perfect. It feels yeah, relaxing, I, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think I got one myself when we were there. Sweet. I just had shots. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the flights. There the were flights. flights. Are so we had lots flights. of flights. Yeah. Yeah. My, my bank account didn't like me after that trip. <laughs> Do they have you any food save. other than like chips and guac and queso? Uh, last time we were there, it's just like the chips and stuff, yeah, but, but if good. you go next really door yeah. to San Angel. Well, we were there for... The, for food and wine, so like it wasn't like we were eating. Right, yeah. I just wouldn't recommend showing up there in the beginning on an empty stomach. That's you're true. Just getting chips, and they're good chips, but they're only going to do so much for you're you. You're going to tank if yeah. you have. You just might want to eat, especially if you go for food and wine. You're going to pass a lot of booths on the way to Mexico, so you just stop. Well, and get if a you go bite. that one way, but if you go the other way, no, still be some. Yeah, it may not be the time to talk about it, but they didn't do flavors from fire this year. Oh. Food and wine festival. R.I.P. And I'm really upset about it. That that was my favorite booth of all time. Me too. Yeah. Me too. The corned beef. I don't know if you've heard us talk about it in previous <laughs> podcasts. We, I think we probably have. Probably at least three episodes. <laughs> but it is so delicious and it's gone and who knows if we'll ever get it back. We'll call flavors. From yeah, you could, you could just email Disney the way you email Taco Bell about your naked chicken Yeah, chalupa. that's true. Naked, yeah, Taco Bell, if you're listening, Taco Bell. Taco <laughs> Bell, I'm talking to you. Bring back the naked chicken chalupa. Um, all right. So what other, do you remember any other drinks that you've gotten? Just the flights. Just the I really flights. pretty much just get the avocado margarita mm-hmm. as my cocktail and yeah. the flights. And then the flights. Yeah. They also have, um, I think it's a, a cantaloupe margarita. They have uh, a they spicy have margarita that's really good. They have, they have. there's a whole book oh, of different margaritas that you can try. Somebody got a spicy margarita. Or that, it might have been me. 
It could have been right. me. I don't remember. But and somebody had it. They tried one. Oh, yeah, really the good. blood orange. Yeah. And they're hefty. Like, they're not they're big. tiny little oh, margaritas. No. Yeah. yeah, they're, they're really big. big. Mm-hmm. And you can get yours. Uh, you can sit and get a table. Or you can take yours. They'll put it in a to-go cup. And you can walk around with yeah. it. Yeah. We awesome. sat. Yeah. And we, we waited for a table. We did. We were. Because we I like, like the experience. But it wasn't. It all, wasn't it like you didn't have a reservation yet? Didn't you have to like. It was like yeah, you can't make a reservation. Serve. Yep, it's first come, first serve. But they'll take your name, put it on a list, and then they'll find you a table. And there's some cool, like, it's a it's a tiny spot, so you feel really big. secluded. Yeah, you feel big in the spot. Yeah. Uh, but it's cool. And then they have uh, paintings all around that represent the process of how they make tequila. With the mm. guys with the agave mm-hmm. plants and stuff. It's really cool. Our producer would like to make reference to the sangrita. Oh, Sangrita, yes. This so, just in. This just in from the producer. This is actually her favorite part of ordering uh, tequila shots there. And they have a rather extensive menu of tequilas and mezcals. But you can order with a Sangrita on the side, which is not for me. Uh, I like it. I'm I like to chase I don't with something that. a little bit sweeter. Uh, it's sort of, how would you describe oh, it? Oh my menu? gosh, yes, I remember it's that. It's kind I, of like I, salsa. I would, I, it's co- yes, but like it's pure liquid. It's not chunky. Right. Yeah. Correct. I was drinking those by themselves. Yeah, they were delicious. You were. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like when you take a shot of the Anna tequila Harper. and the sangrita. It's kind of like a Bloody Mary. Yeah. It was. It was. Mm-hmm. A great thank chaser. you, producer, for saying that because <laughs> I forgot about that completely. Yeah. So we've got a drink here with us that we whipped up. Megan and Garrett actually helped me whip this one up. This is a play off something that you can get down in Disney World uh, that is called a Yucatan, a spicy Yucatan Where do margarita. You get it, Stephanie? We're going to find out in oh. just a little bit. I'm oh, glad you so asked, weird. Garrett. Oh, wow. <laughs> cool. Um, but it's got ancho reyes, which is a liqueur. I thought you were going to say anchovies. I like, no, I wouldn't have a drink with anchovies in it. That's gross. Uh, but Ancho Reyes is a green chili liqueur. It's very delicious. A hint of spice. And then we have some orange and lime juice and tequila. What do you guys think of it? It's a little, I like it. I yeah. like it, yeah. It's refreshing mm-hmm. with also being a little bit savory because of mm, the, the, the green spice. chili. Yeah. So it might be for everyone because it's savory, but mm. it's nice. It's like a... It, Feels warm. We're living that craft cocktail life. That's right. And I've never looked back. <laughs> Seriously. And um, I'm happy to tell you guys, we're actually going to take a short break. We're going to invite on our guest. Oh, my gosh. And they're going to educate us on how to step our cocktail game up a little bit more and maybe even show you where you might have tried his cocktails already before. Oh, my God. You guys ready? I'm so ready. Let's do this. All right. Short break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Wow, playing frisbee on the beach is the best. I know. What a great day for fun in the sun. Why don't you come join us, Garrett? I know how much you love ultimate frisbee. You know, I'm actually going to sit this one out, guys. Garrett, that's not like you. Is something wrong? It's just that, you know, it's really hot out, and and my thighs, they're, they're so clammy. Oh, don't worry, bro. We've all been there. I've got just the thing in my beach bag. Try this ball of powder. Powder? Steph, isn't that for babies? <laughs> Not this powder, Gare Bear. Whether you're enjoying an actual day in paradise or just grinding away and daydreaming of your next dip to come, Ball of Body Products for Men will keep you feeling fresh, comfortable, and smelling great. The finest Italian talc blend with all natural essentials and fragrances that will keep you chafe free and walking confidently wherever your journey through paradise takes you. Wow, Steph, you're right. I've never felt so fresh and comfortable. I'm gonna wear this at the office. And it smells good too. All right, Garrett, go long. <laughs> Don't mind if I do, Steph. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Greetings from sunny Florida. <laughs> so welcome back from our break, everybody. Today we have on a very special guest. He is currently owner of one of the best Mexican restaurants in Brooklyn, Casa Publica, and the founder of Art of Drink based out of Miami. He is also the maestro of mixology and the creative consultant behind some of your favorite cocktails around Walt Disney World. We have with us Gustavo Ortega Oyarzun. Welcome, Gustavo. Thank you so much. Uh, how's everyone there? 
Oh, we are so good. So Doing excited really well. to have you. <laughs> yeah, we're very <laughs> excited. Uh, we recreated one of the cocktails that we found on your website under the Disney section, the Yucatan Spicy Margarita. It's delicious, first oh, of yeah. all. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I'm <laughs> on my second so one. No. The Ancho. Oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Garrett drinks a little bit faster than us, usually. <laughs> so, so let me drink fast so I can catch you guys up. <laughs> yes, please, please, please do. Uh, but before we dive into the work you've done throughout Orlando and Miami, I'd love to help our listeners understand a little bit more about your life before you got into the art of cocktails and how that's influenced some of your work. Sure. Uh, well, I'm uh, originally from Mexico, from a small town. It's called Celaya in the state of Guanajuato. Uh, that is where I grew up. I was raised there. And uh I had a lot of influence from uh, my, mo- my mom, mm-hmm. which she used to cook a lot. <clears throat> but uh, I went to architecture school. So it was something completely different. Uh, that's when I get, uh, that's when I moved to New York. That was about 10 or more years ago. Mm. And, and, I, and I came for an architectural job. That's when uh, I started working in restaurants. And I fell in love with a uh, with a bar, with a restaurant, all the industry, the restaurant industry, mm-hmm. and that's how everything started. That's so cool. That's such a cool story. And and I love how you said that. You know, you used to help your mom in the kitchen because I can remember. I'm actually from New York as well, and I can remember being a little kid and you know being like pulling on my mom, like trying to yeah. learn some things. So do you feel like she instilled any practices in you that you still use today? Oh, definitely. Uh, something that she taught, uh, she taught me was always like, in, like instead of like cooking, she, she, she taught me how to eat. Mm. So in terms of how you mix things, to create new products or new things. So it was, for me, it was very interesting to see her cooking, but also it, it, it see her, how she eat. Like the way that she um, had a plate and put and mix all the ingredients with well-balanced and each bite what, what, what wasn't a whole experience. Right, right. That is so cool. And I, yeah. I love, I love too how you shared about uh, your architecture school because to me, like cocktails are so much like food. You know, it's first you eat with your eyes, and then you sort of craft, like to you said, like what your mom does, the entire experience. So, do you feel like the balance of artistry and mathematics have kind of lent itself to your career in uh, mixology? Yes, definitely. Uh, for me, making a cocktail is like. Uh, building a house so you need uh, the structure the underground structure uh, which is the spirit then you will have the walls uh, which is uh, the modifiers or the liquors then you will have the painting uh, which is like some uh, cordial syrups or um any other ingredient that you can add. And then you have the decoration, which mm-hmm. is the garnish. So for me, it's like pretty much the same, the same uh, basics. I get it. It's like art. I, I love that. It's, it's, yes. I mean, and going back to kind of what you said before, like everything kind of pairs, per, like pairs with specific things. So when it comes to food, also when it comes to drinks. You know, yeah, drinks exactly. Food, so. You need both of them together. Yeah. <laughs> well, you'd like both of them together. Exactly. Anyway, for and sure. they, and they accent each other. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. And also, also something that I love it is making a cocktail for a specific customer and mm. feeling their needs. So I, I specialize in architecture. I specialize in furniture. So oh, okay. I love to make, I love to make furniture for like, uh, for the houses that I used to make. But, uh, like it took me a couple months to make this. Uh, specifically furniture for someone and it was kind of like interesting the process sometimes they didn't like it sometimes it wasn't what they expect so it took me like a long time to have that process while making a cocktail is like right if i can make it like in five minutes Mm -hmm. and if the customer doesn't like i can modify it really quick and have the same feeling 
of the customer, like when they try it, that that emotion, it's it's exactly the same. So it's and it's way cheaper and faster. So <laughs> yeah, cheaper for sure. Depending on and you use the tippity top of the shelf, but yeah, that's so, that's so funny that you say that because you know they're. Like, if you have your favorite piece of furniture in the house, like for me, I have a sofa that has a recliner on it, and I always find Mm -hmm. myself, even if I try different spots in the house, like that is my spot. You know, I feel like furniture is a pretty intimate item, you know, especially if it's in your home or you have it custom made. And there's some drinks that can kind of bring you back to Mm. a moment or, you know, kind of feel like home. And so it's funny that you shared about the furniture because a little bit earlier in the show, Megan shared about the avocado margarita. And okay. for us, uh, the avocado that you have down at Epcot is like, that's the like Epcot home for us. Yeah. <laughs> like when we drink that, we're like, oh my gosh, we're here. Uh, so it's, it's obvious that the level of care that you put into your furniture, you also have in your cocktail. So we thank you for that. No, thank you. Yes. I, I appreciate that, that you like it. Oh, yes. My gosh. <laughs> I can go for one right now. Uh, but so for me, you know, someone that's moved through different spirits over the course of my life, like I find one spirit that I hang on to. And net, right now it's really just tequila pretty much exclusively. Uh, when I was younger, I used to drink vodka. I thought it was a little bit easier to drink. But now it's if it doesn't have tequila in it. I really don't want it. And uh, I've heard people say that tequila is healthier for you. And that it doesn't really have the kind of sugar that other spirit, spirits have. Is, do you think that that's true? That tequila really doesn't give you hangovers or is a little bit healthier of a spirit? Uh, yes, it is. Actually, it's scientifically proved that the all the agave spirits is the it, 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 they don't give you hangovers. Mm-hmm. So the thing is, and a lot of people have this misconception about tequila. When they were like, when actually, when I was young, my first uh, time that I drink with my friends was with tequila. Mm. And it got, I got wasted. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like everyone, like everyone, I'm pretty sure. Right. <laughs> and, and, I, and I hate tequila because it probably was like a really bad and shitty, not even mm-hmm. 100% tequila. Right. And, and even smelling it, it was like terrible for me. So it took mm. me like a lot of years to understand. And, now that everyone has like more chance to buy good tequilas and, and that approach between the the product that is making in Mexico, which is 100% agave mm-hmm. in terms of any spirit, mm-hmm. uh, it's way easier to find it right now in the market. Mm-hmm. So it's so my suggestion, and I always say, uh, I always tell people, is like, okay. If you think that you don't like tequila, try a, like a good one because mm-hmm. that is going to be something completely different. And going back, what you say about the hangovers, uh, the sugar, like the process when you drink, what happens is like your liver needs to co- co- like to process right. the sugar and and turn it into glucose, uh, so so your uh, system can process it. So that is a function of the liver. That's it. Right. So what happened with other spirits, grains, sugarcane, uh, vegetables like potatoes, uh, it's the, it's very hard for some livers to process. So that's why you get hangover. So, but with agave spirit, you start breaking the enzymes to convert that alcohol into glucose. Think the uh, ones that you drink it. Mm-hmm. With your saliva, that process starts. So it's really easy for the body to get rid of it. Interesting. The problem with mostly spirits as well is the sugar that you add it. Right. So if you drink like a margarita with a, with sugar mm-hmm. or like a artificial flavors or another artificial ingredients and stuff like that, you obviously you're going to get a hangover, but it's not because of the spirit. It's because of the sugar that you drink. Right. So the best way to drink, for like for me, the, the way that I like, and the way that I suggest is just agave, like tequila, mezcal, uh, raicilla, uh, sotol, any agave spirit mm-hmm. with water. Oh, interesting. Mm. So you you ch- like literally you like drink it neat. If you like, you can add a, a, a ice cube. Uh, the same way that people drink whiskey, 
Right, right. Uh, and and just with water. And I can assure you, if you drink a whole bottle of tequila, you will be fine the next day. I accept your challenge, Gustavo. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know how it goes. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, so let's get together and drink it. Yes, and totally. Experiment. We totally should. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we, I, you know, a lot of that we've done sort of, you know, in trial and error. And it's funny, Megan, we have Megan here with us. And she yes. used to not be able to keep up with us. You know, we would go, we'd get like tequila flights or, you know, have a, a few cocktails, like craft cocktails. And she would always want like the frou-frou sh- sweet sugary, sugary drink. What, yes. what was your go-to before? Yeah. Uh, a Long Island very often. Oh, gosh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, wasn't, yeah. I wasn't friends with yeah, her. Yeah, Garrett wasn't around then to, <laughs> to warn her. but uh, And she would always feel sick. And then we kept saying, Megan, you got to just have tequila. Just have some straight, straight meat tequila. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, yeah. she's cured. I yeah. It's a much better time. Yeah. It's a much better I time. Agree better completely. for you. What was it? Maybe two weeks ago we went out and all I had was tequila the whole night. And I woke up the next morning early to go to the beach with Megan and... I was like, I've never felt better in my life. Yeah, you're a new person. You're rejuvenated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and I think for a lot of people, like people are learning that, you know, especially with the internet and craft cocktails being so huge, uh, tequila is becoming more and more trendy. And it's rapidly growing in popularity around the globe and is actually, I don't know if you know this, but it has become the second fastest growing category of spirit in terms of sales. Oh. So, yeah. uh, and then with Mezcal, of course, close behind. And I think that tequila almost used to have a tation for being like a party drink where you just take shots with your friends and have a good time. Like you said, that was your experience, uh, first of all. But like you said, there's so much more to experience uh, tequila and other agave spirits with that. And if, in fact, I learned while we were doing a little bit of research about you that you're an agave sommelier. <laughs> yes. I didn't even know uh, that existed. <laughs> well, it's, um, I I don't know if the word is like, like, classify it like that mm-hmm. but I so I uh, specialize in agave spirits because I always work or mostly in Mexican restaurants mm-hmm. so that's where I start working uh, and I start as a server uh, and then I, I move uh, to the bar and I was a manager of a restaurant awesome. but mostly of the restaurants that I work before were Mexican and because of because I'm Mexican I specialize in most like mostly all uh, Mexican products so that's why agave is one of them that's awesome so do you find that you I know you said that you'll make different cocktail recommendations based on the person that's in front of you do you feel like different types of tequilas or mezcals are suited to a different palate yes definitely uh, as you know, I, I like to com- I like to make uh, 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 compare uh, agave spirits with wines, mm, okay. because uh, like you you can pair like mm, a lot of kind of wines with the kind of the food that you're having, mm-hmm. even if it's Italian, Japanese, Mexican, Chinese. Like uh, you will have specifically this uh, a kind of wine from like I don't know could be like thousands of kind of different wines so it's the same with the tequilas and the mezcales because as you know uh, to make tequila you need blue agave the mm-hmm. first of all uh, but to make mezcal there's around or more than 120 varieties of agave of green agave to wow. make mezcal so you can have even one if one plant, the same plant, for example, as I would say like a Madre Cuiche, which is a specific kind of agave to make mezcal. But it depends on the area, depends on the terroir, depends on the process. It's going to taste completely different from one brand to another. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of the same as the wine. It's the terroir, the kind of the grape, the terroir, the process that is how it's made and how it's uh, storage. So, so meaning like the, the, barrel. the barrel that you're using? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it's exactly the same with the agave spirit. It depends on the plant, the terroir, the process, the storage, um, and then the bottle. So it's a whole, like, even from, mo- like, the same brand, mm-hmm. sometimes it's very, di- very difficult for them to, with one 
uh, batch that, it ha- that is a different timing mm-hmm. is probably going to taste different. Oh, that's so interesting. So, yes. So it's roughly kind of, it's kind of like the difference between just regular, you know, whiskey or bourbon or rye whiskey or anything like that. It's all kind of, it's all dis- distilled the same type of way, but, you know, just a little bit different, essentially. Yes. Okay. Yeah, well, it's a, yeah. So if you, in whiskeys, you have uh, different kind of whiskeys. Uh, so it also depends on the grain, depends uh, how it's made. And mostly important in whiskey is the barrel. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. So cool. I didn't know that there was that much to it. That's so neat. Thank you for sharing. Uh, <laughs> and I'm, I always love the opportunity to connect with an artist. And in my opinion, all mixologists are artists, but you are Perfect. definitely <laughs> very high up on our list of artisans. Uh, so, which Thank is you. perfect. Of course, you're welcome. Um, because we discovered your brand, The Art of Drink. So tell us yeah. what you do at Art of Drink and how you design your salts to complement cocktails. So everything starts when I... Like uh, a couple of years ago, when I started working in the bars, I started working with some brands. Okay. And I get into a different uh, contest. Uh, I, I was in, well, one of the most famous uh, contests is a world class by Diageo. Uh, so I went to this one and I, and I went to a different one. And I learned that most like some of the also mixologists or bartenders that I was competing with, they were they were developing their own brand somehow. So I had a friend who draw um, my logo, which is pretty much my face. Yeah, I love it. It's so cool. <laughs> I'm actually on the website right now. I love it. Yeah. It's so it's it's clean. It's easy to read. I love it. <laughs> so and he did that logo for me. After that, I decided to name it Out of Drink, and but it was just for doing consulting to restaurants. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I won also a competition for uh, to be- become the mixologist for La Cava del Tequila. Oh, interesting. Yes. I didn't so know that. that was a contest. Uh, and the finalists, we were around five bartenders. So the contest, the contest was nation, nationwide. And the finalists, we were, I think, five bartenders from New York. Uh, one of each bartender was like sponsored uh, from a different brand. And I was invited by Casa Dragones. Oh, that's a great brand. I have yes, a friend that's sponsored it. by them as well. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, so they suggest me as a bartender to compete, and that's what happened, and I won. So I became the uh, mixologist for uh, for the Mexican Pavilion in Epcot, and I started working with them with another brand, uh, with another place, sorry. Uh, so Art of Drink became something different because besides doing consulting, was also making like a specific kind of cocktails for all the restaurants. Mm-hmm. And I, des- I started designing the salt for this cocktail. Oh, that makes sense. So, yeah. So, and that's how we started. When, and it was, it became very popular most and mostly uh, La Cava. And also La Cava, Haciendo uh, Saracelina, all the restaurants in the Mexican Pavilion mm-hmm. and Epcot. Uh, it became very popular the salt that we're using. So, and that is that uh, I took that as an opportunity to make different kind of salts and start selling it on the site. Right. Yeah. Of course. And so, that's... I mean, any anyone that uh, are listening to this podcast, this podcast can go to outofdrinknyc.com, uh, which is also my uh, Instagram. Uh, it's at out of drink NYC and they can go and you can order uh, all the salts uh, online. Yeah. Which awesome. is great because, you know, especially right now with depending on what part of the world you're in, a lot of people are needing yeah. to be their own bartender. So <laughs> if you want to level up your game, definitely go to art of drink 
dot com. And I have art of drink dot net as well. Is that different? Well, art of drink dot net was uh, it's like for like the whole umbrella. Mm -hmm. So if you go to art of drink dot net, it says you can visit my website and see what I'm doing. Uh, and also you can go to out of drink .com, which is just specifically for the salt mm -hmm. and the cocktails that we're making. Like we also have uh, Mi Cocktail NYC, which is something that we just developed uh, here during the pandemic where we are making a cocktail uh, to go, which is. Yeah, I uh, saw we, that. Those look so we, good. Yeah. So it's, it's just in the New York City area because we deliver, I deliver personally. Oh, wow. So, That's awesome. That's really yeah. <laughs> good. Awesome. We have some friends in NYC, so we'll tell them to give you a call. And to think about oh, yes. <laughs> that competition. I know. We yeah. And thank you for Maria. entering that competition because you've changed our lives. Absolutely. Uh, and I think like a lot of listeners, uh, a lot of our listeners, especially are huge Disney parks fans. Uh, and we, you know, we posted a little teaser about getting to meet with you today and already people were super enthusiastic <laughs> around getting to connect with you. So I know That's that great. they want to know specifically what drinks did you have your hand in that they can go taste Throughout the parks, especially now that we have Food and Wine Fest running, there's going to be a lot more traffic there. Uh, well, there's one specific drink that you need some most. It's uh, something that I start working with uh, with a new product uh, made by Casa Lumbre. So Casa Lumbre uh, is one of the biggest companies. Uh, I'm pretty sure you heard of the product, which is Montelobos Mezcal, mm -hmm. uh, Ojo de Tigre. Uh, they have uh, Ancho Reyes, yep. which is a, a Chile Ancho Liqueur. Mm -hmm. That's what we're drinking uh, today. Oh, that's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> and now they had two new products. One is, uh, it's called Nixta, <clears throat> uh, sorry, which is a um, corn liqueur. Oh, okay. That's interesting. It, it comes in a one of the most beautiful bottles that I ever seen in my life because it's literally it's a corn. Wow. The bottle it's it's a corn. It's brown, beautiful. The bottle is amazing, uh, and the inside of the bottle is way like you you need to go and buy it. Uh, it will you can mix it with pretty much anything instead of using like. Triple sec, a control, which it has like very tart flavor. Mm -hmm. You can use Nixta. So it will balance your cocktail perfectly. Oh, uh, so with this new product, I developed something that is called popcorn, um, <clears throat> pink popcorn, sorry. Pink popcorn. So pink popcorn. Okay. Uh, so this drink, uh, we started with a recipe which was mezcal. Uh, cucumber, apple, uh, nixta liqueur, and lemon. Okay. So it was it was kind of like a pink, <clears throat> and then we start working and we develop one specifically for uh, la cava del tequila. Uh, is ojo de tigre mezcal, nixta liqueur, uh, pomegranate, pomegranate cactus, uh, a juice. Mm. Uh, a lemon. That so it's, it's so good. And also, it comes with a glass rimmed with popcorn salt. Oh, yeah. cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got all of our attention. That is so neat. Yes. Oh, especially so in the heat, that, that sounds delicious. Yes. So the salt, it, it tastes like popcorn. Oh, so cool. Made we have to go try popcorn. it. Yes. Yeah, Garrett and uh, Megan have reservations for, uh, when was it, guys? What? For your reservations that you just made. For Disney? Oh, yeah, for Disney. Oh. 14th and 15th. Okay, so yeah. so they made a restaurant <laughs> reservation. Today, uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, they're definitely going to, as long as they are able to make it into Epcot, because, uh, you know, it's been pretty tough with all the restrictions mm -hmm. on... Um, we will be going to Mexico. Yes. For <laughs> yes. That's always the first step. Yeah. Day. <laughs> uh, so it's cool. So thank you for sharing that. And I think a big reason that a lot of people enjoy going to Disney, Disney parks, especially Animal Kingdom and Epcot, is the feeling of being able to explore cuisine and culture in a more approachable and convenient way. 
And for so yeah. many, it's a lot easier to go through the World Showcase than it would be to stop around 11 countries across the globe, yeah. you know? Um, and yeah. so in your opinion, especially in Mexico, how authentic of an experience is it really? And why would you recommend visiting La Cava del Tequila at least once? Uh, sorry, uh, can you repeat the question? Of course, I yeah. A little bit. Yeah, so especially in Mexico, how authentic of an experience is this really? And why would you recommend visiting La Cava del Tequila at least once? So the Mexican pavilion, do you feel like it's an authentic experience? Oh, it's 100% authentic. Uh, starting from like the place, it's beautiful. It's all you, I'm pretty sure, all you know already. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the decor, uh, the service, uh, the people who work there, it's, it, it really brings the authenticity of Mexico from the service. The food is amazing. The chefs that they work there are uh, extraordinary because they're doing an excellent job. And that was something very difficult to me because I want to pair all the cocktails and the, uh, the spirit list with that quality that they had it already. So mm -hmm. it was something very interesting and very hard to, to try and, and to work with uh, because I want to be at that level. So, mm -hmm. and and I guess we, we did a good job. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes, the best job. You know, we, we were amusing before you got on that there's something about being in the Mexican pavilion, especially at La Cava, that the whole rest of the park just melts away. Like you feel like you've been absolutely <laughs> transported. You could lose track of time there. You could meet new people. And to me, that's kind of what traveling is about. So you've totally brought that to life. And the tequila yeah, definitely they, helps. <laughs> yeah. And even with like uh, Hilda, Humberto, or like they're uh, the best emba the tequila and mezcal ambassadors that you can even meet. They will give you their heart uh, with experience, and they will answer all the questions that you have. So it's it's a it's a whole experience. It's not just that you go to try something. It's like you go to feel it, and it, it's amazing. Yes, I totally agree. So thank thank you so much for answering our questions. We do have <laughs> one segment left that I warned you about, yes. where we try to offer all of our listeners some kind of professional tips and trips uh, or sorry tips and tricks for when they're traveling around the state or when they want to bring a little bit of florida home with them so here we go it's tips and dip 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 perfect it's tips and dip all right guys take it away what questions do you have for gustavo <laughs> gustavo I'm, I'm surprised i'm surprised you uh you didn't laugh during that. Just saying. Okay. <laughs> That's hazing. Hazing for me on the show. <laughs> so depending on where you are in the world and your comfort level with going outside, like Steph had said, there are a lot of folks that are trying their hand at being head bartenders at home. So we've got a few questions to see what advice you have for our amateur mixers, kind of like myself and Garrett. We're not the most experienced. Um, we try. Yeah, we definitely try. <laughs> what are three or four staples that you think every liquor cabinet needs? Three or four liquors? It's just staples. It like could be a, anything. Like really. a bitter, oh. a mixer, just something anything. that we have to have to make a good oh, cocktail. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, well, for me, one of the most important things is ice. Ooh. Of course. I didn't just see good, that coming. Good, good yeah. carved ice. Yeah. I don't have yeah. an ice maker, so that's good to know. <laughs> yes, we don't. <laughs> <Get an ice laughs> <tray. laughs> because it's, a good idea. it's not about, well, it's better always if you have big ice. Mm -hmm. Like if you you can buy these trays to make big ice mm -hmm. tubes. Uh, if you don't have them, try to use wisely the ice that you have because dilution in a cocktail it's like fifty percent. Mm -hmm. So what happens mo in most places is a lot of people doesn't know how to use it, and that is going to affect the final flavor. So for me, the first one will be ice. The second one, uh, obviously, a uh, good spirit. Right. So um, if you there's some brands that you can use to drink as neat, as I said, or there's some good brands to mix it. Uh, second one, the third one is uh, always have a good selection of, of liqueurs. Mm -hmm. As I said, if you have a couple, like, 
good uh, vermouth. Yep. Um, like Campari, Aperol, those aperitifs, Italian aperitifs, it's always a good choice. Always have, uh, there's, uh, as I said, orange liqueurs, but good brands. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to be a little bit more fancy, you can use like Grand Manier. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and beaters, like the fifth, but it's going to be like, uh, definitely you need, uh, you need good beaters mm -hmm. and you need good syrup. Yeah. So uh, always okay. make your syrups with good sugar. You're meaning if you make it at home. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if you make it at home, try to use like a, like a mascavado sugar yeah. or some kind of sugar that is going to bring, besides the sweetness, it's going to be some flavor and structure to the drink. Like yeah. a raw sugar, like turbinado, yes, versus like regular right. white sugar. Yeah, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yes. I never even considered that. I've always used white sugar, I've, I've, but that makes so much more sense. I've done it. I've like created my own simple syrup like once, mm -hmm. and like it made the cocktail so much better. Oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. But yeah, you could totally get. I could see how you're saying get more of a depth of flavor like yeah. that, almost like not a burnt taste, but it's mm -hmm. like a it's a deeper flavor for yeah. sure. That makes sense. All right, yep. here's one for you now. Are there any specific tools that, you know, we as amateurs should add to our arsenal uh, when it comes to mixing these cocktails? Yes. Uh, definitely a good shaker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is the most. Uh, a good strainer. Yeah. Um, there's, there's some brands on the market that you can find. Um if you want, uh, there's uh, there's a lot of brands, but uh, my suggestion, if you go to Cocktail Kingdom, uh, I think it's the I'm bump. marking that right now. <laughs> Garrett's already <Yeah>. going. <laughs> you will uh, you will find like the basic tools, strainers, uh, jiggers, um, shakers, bar spoons. Uh, glass, I love glasses this website already. to make the glasses to make obviously like uh, dry drinks like uh, old fashioned mm -hmm. Negronis, right. all these. Wow, uh, there's always good to have a nice glass, yeah. uh, but you can find mostly like in a good price no, and they will send bad. it right away. Yeah, yeah, it's not bad on the website. I, I know Garrett and I bought a cheap mixer not that long ago, and we were shaking up the drink, and it all busted out the side. Oh, that, so. was, that, was, <laughs> that was because I had had a few to drink, and I accidentally put no, soda I think it was water. The mixer. I put yeah, soda no, that's water. In it. I'm before. taking notes. Don't, yeah. wor don't worry, it happened to everyone, including us. Yeah. It was my birth. It was my birthday, and I, we had got we had left dinner, and we had to get a mixer. <laughs> it was an emergency mixer. It was an emergency yeah. mixer. Exactly. We didn't have time to but order But we'll check one. out Cocktail Kingdom for I sure. I love that. Thank you for the tip. I'm already on it. I love it. So there are a lot of high-priced tequilas out there. Do you ever think it's worth spending the extra money? Like, are there any bottles you would recommend that are high price and high flavor? Uh, well, this is kind of a trick question because I, I know that a lot of people like the most common and the brands that they can get everywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, they need to be, be care they need to be careful about what they're drinking because a lot of very famous brands they use uh, n uh, flavors they add flavors to the tequila. Right. Oh. I don't want to get into brands, sure. but uh, some of them they add. Like, for example, vanilla. Okay. So for a lot of people, if they drink it, it's going to be really good because it tastes like vanilla, but mm. it's not a natural flavor. Right. So uh, you will find an amazing brand. I mean, I'm thinking right now, like um, Casa Noble, mm -hmm. eh, Ambar, eh, Tequila Ocho, um like in the tequila sites, those, those are like, I, I will say, I mean, Casa Dragones, mm -hmm. it's a really good brand. So these brands are a good price and an amazing flavor. That's awesome. We're going to have to go get a couple. Yeah. Of and, 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 yeah. yeah. and these brands are you mostly going to find in the market. Um, 
Well, definitely, like, if people have the questions about, uh, they can, uh, they can text me, they can send an email, I can, we can answer all the questions that people have about a specific brands. Or they can go to La Cava Tequila and ask for Humberto Anila, and they will answer everything. Oh, perfect. Nice. I know we'll be asking for that next time. Yeah. I, w- I wanted to add one one question to our to, to what yeah. we're going to ask you, because uh, you were talking about you know good tequilas. Have you had Dwayne The Rock Johnson's Terramana tequila yet? <laughs> actually, I did. What and? Did you um, yes. Uh, I tr- actually, I, I tried with Javier mm-hmm. uh, from La Cava. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, it is really, really good. It, oh, it, it I was, like I, I, I've never been able to like drink a tequila just like by itself very easily, other than yeah. like when we're just taking shots. And like this mm-hmm. was fine. Like it was, it was fine, and I, I was surprised. It's a big fan. <laughs> I, I'm me too. Gara likes surprised. anything by Dwayne the Rock Johnson, though. So <laughs> I mean, yeah, of yeah. <laughs> very good. So I've got one last question for you. I know that you've yeah. done a lot of work in Miami and. We have a lot of listeners that travel to Miami. Do you have a place that you love, like a great cocktail bar there or anywhere that you have to go every time you're in the city? Yes. I, there's a couple places that I like. Uh, the last time I was there because I was there like uh, three weeks ago, uh, I went to this, this a taqueria. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called uh, La Santa Taqueria. Okay. Uh, it's... Uh, right now, for me, is one of the best tacos in Miami. Uh, and I try the michelada mm-hmm. uh, with a cerveza Tulum, which I had it before, but it was like, I, I didn't remember the flavor, but it's so good. So oh, you have exciting. to go ask for a uh, the Villa the Villamelon tacos are one of the best tacos I ever tried. Awesome. With a Michelada with Cerveza Tulum. And um, we are going to be doing something uh, in a couple months in Miami. We oh, wow. having a project over there. Yes. That's awesome. You have to let us know and we'll share it on our page so that our listeners can get over there. And we're not too far. Yes. I mean, yeah. we'll, and we'll, we'll go come. too. <laughs> what are you talking but, about? We'll yeah, go. but definitely let us know. Yeah, we have a, a Mexican uh, venue, mm-hmm. uh, and I, I'm helping with the consulting for the place, the drinks, everything, and it's going to be amazing. Oh, yeah. So okay. It's a surprise. I can't tell you that much. That's okay. We love surprises. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if you stay tuned, you're going you're gonna to figure out. Absolutely. And maybe you can, we can meet and have a drink there. That'd there we great. go. Yeah, I, I, think, I think we owe you a shot. For sure. At this point. Yeah. <laughs> Only high quality. Tequila. The highest quality highest that you recommend, and then we'll give it to you. We'll give we'll it right buy. back. We'll just buy it. Yeah. We'll just buy it. <laughs> right. Yes. Well, Gustavo, thank you so much for coming on and hanging out with us today. Uh, you know, like I said, there are so many people that just appreciate all the, the work that you've done in curating these cocktails. And tell us again where they can find you on social media. Okay. So you can find me at out of drink NYC. Uh, that's my Instagram mm-hmm. and my uh, Twitter, and you can um, you can go to outofdrink.net, and then you can find everything that I that I did, or like my website and also the salts. You can go there as well. Well, you just got a new follower, just letting you know. <laughs> Garrett, uh, Garrett's uh, your new best friend. So I thank you it. again so much. <laughs> we you. appreciate you. No, thank you. And uh, yeah, we will stay in touch and let us Absolutely. know when that secret is out in Miami because we'll be sending everybody there. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Very I, good. I, thank you so much for having me. Uh, and yeah, let's keep in touch. We're going to have a lot of surprises for you from, uh, from La Cava, from all the Mexico Pavilion, different restaurants, and now this new project in Miami. Awesome. We are looking forward to that. Very Perfect. Excited. Yes, very excited. very excited. Have a good night. Okay, thank you. Have a good one. You're Bye-bye. welcome. Bye-bye. All right, how fun was that? It was awesome. That was great. Right? Man it. knows his stuff. No I kidding. learned how to drink better. <laughs> I didn't know he was an architect. That's so cool. He's like obviously like always a creative person. Right, exactly. And yeah. you know, it's funny that you say that because his, he said that his mom taught him how to eat better. And Gustavo taught us how to drink. Better. I'm very excited came full to, to meet him in person. Someday. Oh, yeah. I hope we get to because, wow, 
I, I knew I loved him before I met him. Yeah, <laughs> it's great like guy. that Savage Garden song. All right, guys, it is time for our Just a Day in Paradise trivia challenge. You are playing for one of our sweet sticker packs that represent some of our favorite places in Florida. Here we go. Here we go. The grand opening of Coronado Springs' new high-rise tower was back in July of 2019. The tower features 16 floors and 545 guest rooms with 50 suites. With the opening of the tower comes a new arrival and reception experience for the whole resort featuring a dramatic two-story lobby. Toledo the Tapas Steaks and Seafood Lounge, and Dahlia Lounge on the rooftop of the tower offer amazing eats and delicious libations with panoramic views. Grand Destino Tower takes its name from the surrealistic Disney animated film Destino by Walt Disney and what renowned surrealist artist? Do you guys know? You can't say, but do you know? I'm not sure. It is. Could I hear it again? (laughs) The whole thing. (laughs) It is it's Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Leonardo <laughs> DiCaprio. Is it? It's not. It's not Leonardo DiCaprio. If you think you know the answer at home, let us know on Twitter at the Dip Crew or email me at Steph at justadayinparadise.com. We will select one winner at random and shout you out on our Instagram story. Good luck. Okay, everybody. Thank you for tuning into Just a Podcast in Paradise. We know you have your choice of travel podcasts, and boy, do we thank you for choosing to travel with us. We would love it if you would subscribe so you don't miss an episode because, my gosh, they just keep getting better and better. Am Every I right, Garrett? Every single week, Steph. Every week. We're Every setting week. the bar higher. What do you think, Megan? We're always going to get 12 higher. stars. Higher. 12, 12, 12, Every 12 single stars. Time. We're only at episode 18. <laughs> Let's get higher. Higher. You can also follow us on Instagram at Just Take a Dip for daily updates on what's happening around Florida. And check out our YouTube channel, Just a Day in Paradise, for destination ideas, restaurant reviews, unboxing things you might want to take on your next trip, and copycat recipes from some of our favorite places in Florida. We're wishing you a little bit of sunshine wherever you are, and we hope to see you in paradise soon. Say goodbye, everybody. Drink some tequila for me, everyone. Everybody take Take shots, a shot. Shots. 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 Peace. Adios. No. I wish we could have taken a shot with Juice Gustavo. Ju- Juice Gustavo. Gustavo. <laughs> oh, we should have. We, we got to get him back on. Scott. We got to call him. All right. We're on to outro. That's outro it. Get him back, back on. Intro. Get him back on. <laughs>